Last week, we go back again to Ephesians chapter 4. Is it in the New Testament? Right before the book of Philippians. Let's look at verse 26 and down to verse 32. Of course, we read these verses last week, but we're going to read them again. It says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this passage of Scripture. Lord, there's so much we can take out of it, so many topics we can choose, so many ways and directions we can go. But Lord, I'm going to preach the message you give to me this morning. And Lord, we're going to look at roadblocks in relationships. And I pray, Father, help us, Lord, with our relationships that we have, that we not be stumbling blocks in the lives of other people. I just pray, Father, again, if there's someone here this morning and never received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, may today they make that decision. May today they step out and receive Jesus as Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. So, of course, we're looking at the uh, subject of the family this month. And, uh, and, of course, I said this before and I say it again. A lot of times when you mention the family, immediately most people, in it, that's our human mind. We have a tendency to go to marriage, <laughs> husband and wife. But when it comes to the family, it's more than that. We have a church family, right? You're part of a family. You have a mom and dad. And even if you're not married, because some people say, well, I'm not married. You know, I, that, last, that message is not for me. Oh, well, we're not talking about marriage. Uh, we're talking about relationships. All right? So let's look about today about the roadblocks of life. There are roadblocks in relationships. You agree with that? Well, for an example, conflict, it is something that you cannot avoid in relationships. Got that? No matter what relationship you might be thinking right now. From marriage to between you and your daughter, you and your son, uh, you and uh, your brother and sister, you and your father and mother, you and people in the church, relationships have conflicts. Okay, there it's it's something we cannot. I mean, we can try to avoid, but let me put it like this: a relationship is always between two people, right? It takes two, so to make that relationship work, and there's always uh, conflict with the relationship. So, for an example, roadblocks. If you drive through today's Palestine, you will. Uh, that's a word that uh, Brother Rosado don't like. <laughs> you will frequently encounter roadblocks. So. Uh, these are not construction roadblocks you might, might find in, in uh, like here in the States sometimes, but military checkpoints they have there, and uh, guarded by either Israelite or Palestinian soldiers. So anyone passing through must be prepared to show identification papers and vehicle might be subject to being searched. So for American checkpoints in Israel can be very tense due to the unfamiliar nature of it and due to the fact that the soldiers are all heavily armed, so including wearing machine guns. So people get a little uncomfortable with that. But roadblocks in the Holy Land are common. In fact, they are much like conflicts in relationships. Uh, relationships, conflict relationships are common. Uh, you know, people sometimes in a relationship, you are misunderstood. Sometimes you're misinformed. Sometimes you say something that's not very nice, and it creates tension in a relationship. But, but we will learn, we, we're going to learn this morning how you deal with that, how you resolve those roadblocks in relationships, how you remove those roadblocks. So there is a, a way to do those things. 
So the difference between the two, like I mentioned here, however, is that while physical roadblocks are out of, in the open, most uh, relation conflict happens uh, uh, and related privately. So sometimes it happens in our own minds and our own hearts, and sometimes the other person involved in the relationship has no clue what's going on. So you may look at, for example, a couple in, 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 uh, with a perfect marriage and assume that a great marriage never have conflict. Don't be deceived. Everyone has conflict, all right? They say, all these people don't have any problems. <laughs> Everybody have problems. So the truth is, conflict, or at least disagreement, is fairly common in relationships. The difference between uh, a strong relationship and a weak relationship is how we deal with those problems, okay? You follow that? The, pro the difference is how you deal with those problems, okay? So let's look at this. This, I mean, before I get there, a couple more things I have here for you. So, if you learn to respond to disagreements in a godly, thoughtful way, the very process of working through it together in the conflict that happened in that relationship with one another, it will get stronger. Okay? If, however, you respond to the, whatever is in that relationship with unkind way, each conflict may breed underlying anger and resentment between both people involved, involved in the relationship, which, which can result on one walking away from it. Okay? For an example, if you, can't, if you have a relationship, let's say, with your daughter, with your son, with a person in the church, you, you, you use it in your mind. Whatever relationship you have. And as if there's a conflict in that relationship, and if the, if the idea of both people in the relationship is to resolve that relationship, you know, let's say it resolve that, if, it's, if, if the, both of them don't want to resolve it, if one is at fault and they want to admit their fault, what we do when we drive the other person away? Yeah, I'm, I, the question said, how long are you going to push against that person and how long that person is going to stay and take it? So relation, conflicts are, man, are meant for one thing, to resolve it. Because conflicts come all the time in any relationship. So let's look at this. How conflict begins. Okay? Do you remember your first fight, let's say, with your daughter? Your first fight with your son or disagreement, I'll put that this way. The fight, of, when I think about, say, fight, I'm thinking about physical things. It was like a first conflict. Do you remember that? So the thing is, how did you resolve it? You see, in, in reality, most conflicts uh, offer a different, uh, different perspective uh, and have an underlying issue. So what causes conflict, for an example, uh, in a relationship between a father and a son, or a father and a daughter, or a mother and a son, a mother and a daughter, or between a husband and a wife, or between, let's say, a friend of yours that you have in the neighborhood, on your workplace, or even in the church. What causes those, those, those uh, uh, underlying uh, uh, um, roadblocks in, in that relationship? Let's look at this. Letter A, selfishness. This is not to say that the very disagreement should be resolved by one, but a lot of times it happens because of selfishness in a part of one. Look at what James said. From hence come at wars and fightings among you. He's asking a question there. Come they not hence even of your loss that war in your members? So selfishness is not, absent, is, is, is not the absence of love. It's actually self-love. If you're in a relationship with anyone, it doesn't matter what relationship is, selfishness doesn't fit there. Because if you put selfishness in there, you're thinking more by yourself than the other person. You're going to push the other person away. Because the other person is going to come to a point, he's going to say, you're very selfish. And you know what you, when that person comes to that conclusion? I'm walking away. Because you're thinking just about yourself. So selfishness, put it this way, if you are a husband and a wife, if you have a relationship with your daughter, if you have a relationship with your son, if you have a relationship with anybody in your neighborhood, in your workplace, if you have somebody that have a, as a friend and you have that relationship and you want that relationship to grow, remove selfishness. Because with selfishness, that relationship won't grow. Because selfishness is self-love. So think about that. 
when we think our conflicts are about who does the the uh, uh, I'm right and, 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 and they're wrong, you know, th that doesn't work. See, selfishness says you're wrong, I'm right. Look, listen, any conflict can be resolved, but it involves more than you. It involves two, if you're in a relationship, it involves two people. Okay? So selfishness is something that not belong in any relationship. I mean, you can have a relationship, but what you're going to do is push that person out of the way. That person eventually is going to walk away from you if, you, uh, if you're in that relationship, whatever relationship is that you have. And let me tell you, if you want the relationship to grow and to flourish, don't be selfish. Okay? So let's look here. Um, go down a little bit here. Let it be. Pride. Pride. Go to J Proverbs chapter... 13 verse 10. Look what it says there. God is very clear. Only by pride come and contention. You see? Contention in a relationship. Only by pride come and contention. But with uh, well advice is wisdom. So conflict and contention do not have the, the, to be synonymous. It is, is, it is possible to disagree or, without being contentious, but constant conflict usually includes contention. You see, you can agree and disagree. My wife and I, we disagree many times. I say to her, honey, I don't agree with you. She said, I don't agree with you. And even in our friendships, we can say, to her, I don't agree with you. You don't agree with me. So when we put pride in the relationship, guess what you do? You're going to lose your friend. You're going to lose that relationship, whatever relationship you are. You want to lose your son, you want to lose your, lose your daughter, you want to lose whatever. Take pride out of the way. It says, only by pride come and contend. So when we are proud for, we never admit that we are wrong. Proud people will never tell you they're wrong. They go around and around and around and around and they never tell you they're wrong because they're too prideful to admit they're wrong. Yep. If you expect them to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I was wrong, you're going to wait a long time. Pride is, is this obstacle that grows in relationships. In pride, and the Bible is very clear in Proverbs 13, 10, it says, only by pride come in contentions. All right, so, mom, dad, why are you so prideful? You guys are wrong. What's the answer? You do what I say, and they're going to make an argument out of it. They don't want to admit that they're done wrong, or they're wrong. So, pride, it is an ingredient that destroys relationships. Selfishness is one. Pride is another. So what do we need to do with that? Take pride out of, out of your relationships. If you're wrong, admit you're wrong. Listen, sometimes we think we're weak when we say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. You get that? Sometimes we think we're weak. People, I mean, especially men. They think they're weak. Oh, if I tell them I'm sorry, what are they going to think of me? They're going to think you're a person that live up to your standards. I made a mistake. Please forgive me. Some, some, you know, I, I put it this way. My dad, when we grew up, my dad was never wrong. My dad was always right. And when we got to be teenagers, we said, Dad, please. You, you know, he's so wrong. He would get angry. We went to, he didn't want to admit that he was wrong. You know, because we the kids, you know, we're gonna, you know we were going to disrespect him. No, we respect him even more. So in a relationship, take pride out of the way. Conflict and contention do not have, like, like I said, the same, uh, 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 let me take that back. Okay, pride makes us unwilling to admit when we are wrong or to acknowledge another person's point of view. Rather than apologizing, we defend our behavior. Where there is contention in a relationship, pride is at work. Pride is at work. Let us see. Pityness. Some things really are so small to argue about. Some people are very pity about anything. Yesterday, I hey, listen. One thing I observed: I observed people. Yesterday, I li left here. I was correcting your tests. Since so I left here, I went to uh, Chick Fil A. I made a mistake, but I think the Lord just showed me that. You know, sometimes He said I made a mistake, but no, no. I said I was going to the drive-through. The drive-through was so long. I was like, did people really like this chicken that much? It was like a line was, so, I was like, oh, my word. But I just want Chick-fil-A. So I said, I don't care. I'm going to walk inside. So I park my car. I walk inside. 
So I'm there, and there's a line. As I figure, maybe you know, people are afraid to go inside. It was not true. It was packed to the door. So I got my turn. I wait. Took me, took me 20 minutes, and I'm observing people. And it just caught my eye, this lady. She comes to the, to the front side to this kid. Um, I ordered um, macaroni and cheese. I don't have macaroni and cheese. And the, the, the young man said, I'm sorry, ma'am, for missing that in your order. We'll get the macaroni and cheese for you immediately. Thank you. She walks away. We got about like three minutes, and she comes again. The same kid again, and I'm there. And she goes, I told you that I ordered macaroni and cheese. Where's my macaroni and cheese? So, ma'am, we have to cook it and fix it. Can you wait, please? We, we didn't forget you. You could see that. It's like, oh, she was self-pity. She wanted her macaroni and cheese. And as, as he spoke, he turns it back around. There comes the person with the macaroni and cheese. Gives it to, to her, and she like, she was so fuming, she couldn't even smile. I'm like, listen, if you ask the first time, they're going to get, just wait patiently. But pityness. Something really, uh, some things are really too small to argue about. Some people argue about anything and everything. It doesn't matter what it is, and it's an argument. It doesn't matter what it is. I think I have a guy that I work with, you would not even want to talk to him. Any little thing is an argument. And it goes on a whole day. So, <laughs> look what it says in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 3. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife. But every fool will be mending. You see, God says it's an honor for those who cease from strife. Listen, folks, who wants to live with self-pity? You know, it's, listen, how you want a relationship to grow if you just pity about yourself all the time? You follow that? I just want to help you this morning, okay? That's, that's roadblocks in friendships or in relationships. So the pity this. Get the pride out of the way. Get selfishness out of the way. Get pityness out of the way. Let it be. Fear and insecurity. When someone had been hurt and feels a conflict coming on, often they withdraw to avoid it rather than engage in a resolution. Unfortunately, problems, uh, problems self-resolve uh, uh, with only surface uh, uh, solutions usually Faster, but a lot of times, you know, the worst thing you can do is to run away from the problem. All right. So let's say, brother Tom, you me and you, we got an issue going on. I try to resolve the problem with them, and every time I call him, he's not available. I go to his house and knock on the door, and he has a sign on the door: oh, "I'm not home." <laughs> and I, I'm just trying to. Resolve the problem. Like, you know, I'm a, my, my friend. You know, something going on. You know what? He's running away from the problem. It, does it get resolved? No. No, folks. Let me put it this way. It could be a marriage. It can be your children. It can be your, your mom and dad. It can be uh, a co-worker. It could be a neighbor. It can whatever it is that is your friend. I tell you what. If you walk away from the problem, the problem doesn't get resolved. You got to just sit down and listen. And you don't resolve problems with arguments. You get that? Arguments don't resolve problems. You know what it does? It make, escalates the thing. Exactly. You start like this. Then it goes, oh, you know what? The voice is getting louder and louder. Before you know, you're screaming at each other because it's an argument. Now, if you sit down and communicate and try to make sense of everything, guess what happens? You resolve the problem, your relationship grows. Communication. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, right? So fear of in insecurity. Some people feel very insecure about confronting the problem. Again, I said this last week. We, we resolve the problem. We don't attack the person. Right. You cannot have a relationship grow if you're constantly attacking the person. Yep. Then you're not resolving the relationship. You're just demeaning the person. Right. So look what's said in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear had torment, he that fear it is not made perfect in love. So if we love a brother and sister, if we love our children, whenever relationship, and you feel, feel that you love that person, you got to say what? Don't fear. If it's a problem, don't go argue. Sit down and resolve it. Talk about it. Let it eat. Satanic attack. 
There can be no doubt that in any relationship, the enemy wants to destroy it. Is the goal of Satan. He wants to make you feel miserable. He wants to kill and to destroy. He wants to kill your relationships. He wants to destroy you. And to a point that you say, I don't want to live anymore. This life is stinks. I don't like living anymore. If, to a point that you're disgusted about your own life. That's what he wants to do to you. So, satanic attacks. Be careful. Don't give place to the devil in your relationships. Don't give him a foothold. If you give him, guess what happened? He's going to put his foot in between that relationship, and he's going to try to, to destroy that relationship. When I was a teenager, remember that all the time. Oh, he was my friend, not my friend anymore. Oh, she was my friend, not my friend anymore. There's a lot of contention going on in there. And, of course, when this, this contention, I mean, you've been in school, too, especially in public school. I came from public school. You know what happens? You got the little notes that, that these people in the contentions write and give it to you, the other people because they want, the other wants to go against that person, too. So, you know, I'm mad at you because I'm going to get a bunch of them to be mad at you, too. You say, what kind of real friendship is that? That's not friendship. That's hateful ship. <laughs> Here's the word, if it's such a word. That's hateful ship. <laughs> so, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, says we have to be sober, to be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion seeking about who he may devour. He wants to devour you. He wants to destroy your relationships. And he will if you give him a foothold. So, what we do? Take pride out of the way. Take selfishness out of the way. Stop being pity about it. I tell you what, don't give the devil a foothold. Number two, how conflict escalates. How conflict escalates. You know how they are? I'm going to give you some points this morning. Failure to acknowledge the problem. So, is there problems in every relationship? Go with me like this. Yes, there is problems in every relationship. Every relationship, there, are, there will be problems. You say, I have a, a problem-free relationship. I'll tell you what, don't lie to yourself. There's always something that can go on in a relationship. Maybe you're being misunderstood. Maybe you're misinformed. Maybe you said something. Whatever it is. But there are always problems that come about in a relationship. The thing, is, the thing is, failure to acknowledge that problem eh, 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 escalates. So, denial is dangerous uh, to your relationships. When, when uh, the personal relationship, when uh, 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 acknowledge that the conflict exi uh, 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 I'm sorry, when we fail to acknowledge that a conflict exists, it damages the relationship and it discourages the other person. For an example, let's say, Brother Tom, me and you again. <laughs> let's say I said something that you didn't like it. And you come to me and you tell him, it's like, you know what, brother, that words, you know, it was a little hurtful. If I brush it off, what am I going to do to you? I'm going to hurt you even more. You follow that? See, I, he acknowledged that I said something, and he comes to me as a friend. He comes to me, and he doesn't come to me to destroy me or put me down. He can say, brother, you know, that thing really hurt me a little bit. Friends will take it back and say, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Maybe I didn't mean it that way. Maybe that's the way he got it. But if I brush it off, I say, wow, you know, you, you, can, you can take it. No, don't, don't worry about it. You know what? I can hurt him even more. So we need to be careful how in our relationships how we do it because if we fail to acknowledge something, we can break that relationship. Because it goes like this. You keep hurting the person, hurting the person. What do you think the person is going to do eventually? Going to walk away from you. It will walk away from you. So we need to, uh, the, one we, we need to, the failure to acknowledge our wrongs, it can break relationships. And when they're broken, it's hard to amend it back again. So the failure to relationships, it can be with your kids, it can be with your spouse, it can be with somebody in the church, it can be in your workplace, whatever it is, we need to recognize if we did something wrong, we need to recognize our wrong. Put it like this. Look what it says in 1 John 1, 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him, talking about Jesus, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. 
So another way this happens is when our, in our relationships, we, like I said, when we say, when we say what's wrong, we need to talk about something. The other response, there's nothing to talk about. All right, so you have a friendship, you have a relationship with somebody, and the person comes to you and say, listen, we have a problem here, I need to talk about it. let's talk about it. And you say, well, there's nothing to talk about. What are you doing? You're brushing that person off. Yep. You're pushing the person to the side. How you think not? Think with me, all right? You said those words. Put yourself on the other person's feet. How you think that person will feel? Now, again, be sensitive. You can say, I'm busy right now. Can I get to you in two, three or four minutes? Then you're not brushing the person off. You give an opportunity. That's how you build relationships. Otherwise, you will destroy it. I hope I can help you this morning. So because, again, if you have a friend, if you have a sister, a brother, a father, a mother, a son, a daughter, a husband, a wife, if you have these people and you want to grow the relationship with them, let me tell you, don't brush them off. Talk with them. Resolve really. Don't attack the person. Attack the problem. You know, like when you sit down, you sit down together and you attack the problem. I, so listen, I'm a big believer of, uh, of communication. Communicating goes a long way. And sometimes we are misunderstood. Have you ever been misunderstood? I think all of us fell in that category. When we say something and people mis misunderstood what we said. But let me tell you, we can, we can refix that thing and, say, uh, and, and admit, like, listen, folks, that's not what I said. I said. I said it the wrong way. Please forgive me. Let it be. Withdraw from the real relationship development. See, many people, instead of getting back and be growing the relationship, they withdraw from that relationship because of the problems. But if we withdraw from those relationships, we don't build, we're destroying them. We have a problem, we resolve the problem. We talk about resolve the problem. But withdraw from the relationship because there's something in between. It doesn't help, folks. It destroys them. Go like this. All right, so let's say I have a, I have a problem with my daughter. She calls me, and she calls me, and she leaves messages because she lives in New York. She calls me. She tried to FaceTime me. She tried all kinds of stuff, and I ignore it and ignore it and ignore it. What am I doing? I'm withdrawing, withdrawing. What am I doing? I'm hurting her. I'm making the problem bigger than it already is. Because now when I finally decide to answer, now I have to answer why I, and what do you do? Many people lie. Oh, I didn't get your calls. God should be in that time going, liar. <laughs> See, but the, one, the, more we, the more we withdraw from the problem, the worse it gets. So we need to be, in, in any relationship, there's always two ways. You can either build that relationship or you can destroy that relationship. Those roadblocks that come up in the relationships can be removed. Folks, don't you ever drive in the road and you have uh, detours, there's roadblocks? And you can't go through there, and what do you do? You go to the detour. But those roadblocks aren't there forever. When the problem is solved, they remove the roadblocks, then you can move again. It's the same thing in a relationship. In a relationship, there are roadblocks, but if we avoid it, avoid it, to fix the roadblock, guess what happens? It gets worse. Okay. Let's put like George Washington Bridge over there as a big hole in the bridge, and they put a roadblock. You, you assume they would fix it, right? So they can remove it. Imagine like 10 years go by and nobody fixed that thing. What do you think is gonna happen to the bridge? That's what happened in relationships many times. There is a roadblock and one or the other refuses to fix it and guess what happens? It gets worse. It doesn't get better, it doesn't fix itself. Let us see, spiritualizing the problem. Sometimes we spiritualize the problem. Well. The devil just fighting us. There is true, that is true, spiritually talk, uh, talk about a problem is the same as rolling up our sleeves and deal with the problem. Don't blame the devil for your words. Oh, the devil 
made me do what? Oh, the devil is fighting us. No, listen, the devil is an enemy. We know that, right? He's an enemy. He's always with against us. It don't matter where you are in life, the devil is coming after you. But when you have a problem in a relationship, don't go blame him. Maybe you created the problem. Maybe the other person created the problem. But it was not the devil. Listen, the devil don't make you lie. You come, the lie comes out of your lips. All right? The devil doesn't make you go where you don't want to go. You go at your own feet. All right? It's always us, even though he might be whispering and tempting us, ultimately it's our decision. Whatever you go, whatever these hands do, whatever these eyes see, whatever this mouth speaks, it comes out of us. Oh, the devil made me do it. The devil doesn't make you do anything. We make that decision ourselves. If you say, oh, oh you know, you hurt me. I mean, are we friends? But then guess what? I just wait a couple of weeks and I forgive you. Oh, well, that's not the devil. That's you. Right. So spiritualizing the problem, you know what happen? He, let me tell you this way. Brother Tom, there we go again. All right. <laughs> there we go again. Brother Tom. I'm going to sleep on this. You know, two weeks from now, I might forgive you. And, you know, we can go on with our relationship. What do you think I'm going to do to him? I'm like, well, okay, all right. He's going to find another friend. You see, the, the, we should not spiritualize the problem. Okay, letter D. This is a big word. <laughs> Let me see if I can say this right. What is that? I say this word. Gunnies? Gunny sacking. Okay. It is amazing how well or memories can work when it comes to holding on past faults in relationships. Folks, harboring past hurts is like keeping them in an eternal gunny sack to be able to dump out during disagreements later. No good can come out of that. Listen, I don't care what relationship you have. When you have a problem, if you bring past problems that have already been forgiven, you got a problem. Especially if you think that, again, pride and selfishness, you try to bring it up to one purpose, to hurt the other. Guess what happens? You're really hurting the other. But the thing is, I said, I'm going to hurt you to make you see you're, you're wrong. And I guess what? Well, sometimes we hurt it in a way that they walk away even more. And the problem doesn't get resolved. Okay? So look what it says in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. I, even I, uh, I'm sorry, I, even I, am he that plotted out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. So, brother, I really offended you yesterday. And instead of I come to him and, uh, and I ask forgiveness, he forgives me. And next week, we have another disagreement, and I bring that up. Remember what, you, what he brings that up. He said, remember what you did last week? I didn't forget that yet. You know what that means? It means literally that even though you see verbally, I forgive you, in your heart and mind, you never really did. And Jesus said, the Lord says right here, it says, and I will not remember thy sins. You know, see, did God forget what we did? No. Did God choose to forget about it? Yes. You see the difference? The Lord knows what we have done. He didn't like forget about it. He knows what we have done. But he chose to forgive us. So, your relationship between you and your daughter, you and your kid, your son, you and your father and mother, whatever relationship you have, when you have the relationships, when there's something going on, some turmoil going on in there, okay, what do we do? That, that roadblock. Somebody got to forgive somebody. But when we won't forgive, forgive. Amen. There you go. <laughs> Letter E. Attacking the person instead of the problem. I said that last week. I'm not going to elaborate a lot on that. But again, in, a in any relationship, attack the problem. Don't attack the person. Because if you attack the person, you're not going to build a relationship. You're going to destroy it. Letter F. I put it like this. Blaming your spouse. That's more like towards marriage. Blaming your spouse. I am the way I am because of the stress she puts me under. Or I would lose my temper if he, does not, if he doesn't annoy me so much. Well, that's a problem in marriage. Uh, and then, of course, because they live together. But it can be in, in father, son, or son and daughter in the same way. Let's go to letter G. Desiring to end at any cost. Folks, put it this way. 
In any relationship, there is no winner. You're not in a game like we did Friday night. In Friday night, listen, it was everybody for themselves. You know, everybody wanted to win. I wanted to win. I tried. I tell you, I was sweating there. I, <laughs> I wanted to win. But when in a relationship, there's no winners. It's not to say, you know, I'm better than you. No. In a relationship is to make better us, to make us better people. You know, you want to have a friend, you be kind to your friend, you be loving to your friend, you help your friend, you go out of your way for your friend, you show your friend you really love by your actions. You know, if you do all those other things, you're going to lose your friend. You're going to, they, walk, they will walk away from you, whatever it is. Folks, I work with people, they don't, they don't talk with their brothers, they don't talk with their sisters for years. They don't even go to their parents' house for years because something got broken in there. And never, no one wants to resolve it. So, designed to win at any cost. Listen, in their relationship, there's no winners. It's not a competition. It is two people, whatever they are, whatever age they are, that strive to build that relationship. Your relationship with Jesus is not about who's going to win. Right? Letter H, giving in to avoid conflict. One of the opposites, end of the scripture, is someone who gives in, not in, in a humble, sacrificial way, but simply to make the conflict stop. Someone who, who constantly avoids disagreements by just saying, whatever you want, it, 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 it's okay with me. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. Just to avoid a conflict. Listen, conflicts, they will come. It's part of life. I put it this way. Okay. So, let's say that um, I got to use somebody with two. Okay. I just say, Nancy and Tom driving home today after church. And then, brr, just going down the road, and boom, there goes the tire. Flat tire. You're going to have two reactions out of two people. In this case, it's three because uh, Brandon would be there too. So, you're going to have reaction from three people, three different relationships. I mean, imagine this way. Here's Nancy, points a finger at Tom and says, if you didn't avoid that hole over there, then you'd have a flat tire. <laughs> you see that? You're attacking the person. Maybe you didn't see the hole. I mean, last week, or two weeks or whatever, I went put my car in a mechanic. I went through a hole. I even asked my car to forgive me. I said, poor car, I'm sorry. I almost broke you. I didn't realize there was a hole in the road. Maybe you didn't see it. <laughs> And the thing is, to avoid a conflict, he looks at her and he says, Honey, you're absolutely right. It's all my fault. See what he said? He's just avoiding the conflict. He could say, I didn't see the hole. You know, maybe I thought I could go over that hole and the car would bounce nicely. I don't know. You could have a whatever. But a lot of times we avoid conflict and we think we build relationships we don't. Because here's what happens. This person avoiding conflict this person goes right at it. You know what this person does? It's like a volcano. It ferments, it ferments, and one day it's going to explode. Because one day the bag is full and it can't take it anymore. And when it explodes, that relationship is totally broken. So avoiding conflicts. Let's go to the letter I, buying a gift. This is more for the married marriage folks but how we can put this for any relationship look it says proverbs 15 16 it says bad is litter with the fear of the lord then great treasure and trouble therein so sometimes is buying a gift it is true that sometimes a gift communicate love of course it does to any 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 person i remember uh uh when i was younger and uh, uh we didn't have much money we were poor and uh i remember uh, when it was Mother's Day, I never had money to go buy my mother a gift, but I would, I would draw like a flower and a piece of paper, and I would go to my mother and say, Mom, Happy Mother's Day. And she would love that thing, you know. It looked just a gift. And, you know, relationships are building those things. You know, it, it means something, you know. I thought of you. I mean, I, you know, I mean, even I see in the workplace uh, often a person will come in and say, I was driving to work, I thought of you, I bought you a coffee. 
And you can see the smile. I get like, wow. I mean, things like that. Relationships are building those things and buying a gift. Sometimes it, it, it's great, those things to go on. Letter J, became, becoming angry. Deception or angry is that sometimes an angry outburst uh, will quiet the immediate conflict at hand. But this kind of solving conflicts bring deeper harm in the relationship. Look what James said, for the wrath of men work and not the righteousness of God. Okay, so you got a relationship. You got a person that is easy to anger, and the other person gets, mm, and there's a response back because uh, is she or he is my friend, or she, my father, or my mother, whoever it is, you don't dare talk to them in a certain way because they explode. So we, they become angry very quick, but let me tell you. One thing the person in a relationship does not understand, we can spute the words in anger, but we have to understand that relationship is not growing. That relationship is damaged because we're hurting the other person. And if you don't believe me, talk with the person who's been hurt. And they will tell you, I cannot believe they spoke to me that way. You think when they see that, say those words, what happens? That relationship is not growing. That relationship is broken. Angry words. It's a dangerous thing to be because I tell you what, it escalates. In a relationship, it escalates angry words. It doesn't build relationships, it destroys relationships. Let's go to number three. How conflict resolves. Perhaps no area of our lives reveals our walk with the Lord like relationship conflicts. This is because during moments of conflict, our role response reveals the true depth of our developing Christ likeness. As spiritual Christians, we'll take that seems like a large matter. And, and how do we resolve this problem of roadblocks in our friendships or in our relationships, I would say? There is many ways we can do this. But I tell you what, I think that, put it this way, the, a Christian, a carnal Christian, on the other hand, takes what could remain a small matter and and makes it larger. Let me give you a little illustration here. Pretend that everything you go, you carry with in two buckets, one filled with gasoline and the other filled with water. The instance of, the instance of conflict in your relationships are fires. Some are small fires, just a, like a little spark. Some are large fires, threaten to destroy the relationship. Your choice at each fire is from which bucket you will pour. Even a small fire will become larger when gasoline is poured on it. And, a, and even a large fire can be put out when water is put on it. The effectiveness response we already mentioned are like gasoline, while spiritual grace-filled responses are water. So let me put it this way, and you're going to stop this. How you resolve uh, conflict in relationships, you need to communicate. You need to show love. All those things that I gave you this morning, you need to take it away. Otherwise, I don't care what relationship you are involved in, it will break. And it will, it will vanish it away. I'll tell you what. Relationships are those we will take our selfishness out of the way. We would are humble. And when we wrong, we would admit our wrongs. We're building the relationship. The same thing. Put it this way. Your relationship with the Lord. How you think your relationship with the Lord grows if you're living constantly in sin? It doesn't grow. You need to ask forgiveness, right, to restore that fellowship. Same thing with our relationships. If I did wrong, if I, did wrong I have to admit I had wrong. Otherwise, the other person is hurt. So in order to build relationships, we have to admit our wrong. Folks, I'll conclude with this. Roadblocks in relationships are something that's always going to happen. The key of this whole thing to make that relationship grow and be strong is how you remove the roadblocks out of that relationship. Don't put a band-aid to it. You need to remove that roadblocks and you need to fix the problem. Otherwise, you will destroy it. Here's my question as we close. Are you a person that tried to fix relationships and move the, remove the roadblocks or you just want to put a band-aid and you think you would be okay with it? Folks, we all have relationships here. All of us are people that live in relationships. How you deal with your relationships 
how you deal with that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this uh, passage of Scripture today, Lord. Lord, all of us here have relationships. We have relationships with what our children. We have relationships with our spouses, relationships with people in the church, relationships with co-workers, with neighbors, with family members, Lord. Uh, Father, Lord, we have all have roadblocks that come from time to time in those relationships. Help us, Father, Lord, to remove those, those, those roadblocks in a way that we don't break our relationships. But our relationships would grow and get stronger with time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.